If you're like me and use a four jaw chuck with your lathe, finding an accurate centre from a punch mark can be a challenge. I've seen several solutions over the years from judging by eye to using a lathe centre with a dial gauge. While that does work, it's not what the centre was made for. I mean, you wouldn't use this as a centre punch, would you? Back in my school days, I made a tool for this, and it was the first lathe project that I did. Today, I'm going to make another one. G'day, I'm Steve-O, and welcome to my shed. On this channel, I'd like to share my hobbies of both woodworking and metalworking in a hobby environment. For this project, I'm going to use 304 stainless, but you can choose any material you want, maybe A2 tool steel, brass, or even 4140 if you like. The tool is approximately 200 millimeters or 8 inches long, but you can make it any length that suits your particular equipment. The tool dimensions are relatively unimportant. However, I made the shank on this one 10 millimeters. The knurling is there purely for aesthetics and feel, so feel free to incorporate your own features in the design you choose to make. The raw material I'll be using for this project is 3 quarter inch diameter. For this project, I'll be using my 40-year-old Colchester 2000 lathe, which I've owned for 40 years. The first and most important task is to lubricate the lathe. So we can power up and now we're good to go. The first job will be to cut the bar to length. I'm installing a 20mm tool holder fitted with a WNMG insert. Tool height adjustment goes with a big thanks to Joe Pye for his inspirations on tool height setting tools. I think a lot of us might have one of those. I'm using a 160mm Yamakawa 3 jaw chuck. This chuck came with my first lathe. I've kept it and has been a chuck of choice over many years. Changing the spindle speed from 240 to 415 RPM 
in order to face off the bar. Change to a TPMR insert to do the chamfering. This is sitting on a neutral 20mm toolbar. Change the speed to 750 RPM for centre drilling. I squared and centred the stock at both ends, now changing the drill chuck for a live centre ready for machining. Taking the skin past to establish the side. I find that stainless steel doesn't produce a very nice and friendly swarf when taking a very small cut. It tends to be fine and stringy and prone to birds nesting. Target size is 18.86 and we've got 18.83. Knurling is regarded by some to be an art form. It is a mechanical process and as such it can be measured, specified and planned. I have three pitches of knurl, coarse 14, medium 21 and fine 33. There are others but these are the ones that I have. I will be using a medium diamond pattern for this project. I put together this set of tables in both inch and metric format to provide the diameter I need to achieve in order to provide the best opportunity for a successful knurl in any given size of work. Given that I'm starting with a 3 quarter inch bar stock, which is a little over 19 millimeters, the diameter I need to achieve is going to be 18.86 millimeters. Without going into too many details about how knurling works, the circumference of the workpiece must be divisible by the pitch of the knurl, which is not actually 21, it is 1 inch divided by 21, which is 0.0476 inches. The closest number to 3 quarters of an inch, but less than that, is 0.742, or 18.86 millimetres. This will be the target diameter to produce a circumference that should avoid double tracking of the knurl wheels. The tables include all of the information required to produce knurls up to 8 inches in diameter. I'm using a blank tool holder and a 123 block to line up the tool post. Then I'll change out the holder for one containing the knurl tool. I'm using a pinch type of knurl that applies pressure to the top and bottom of the workpiece. This applies less stress to both the tool and the lathe. Push knurling places enormous stress on the top slide and feet screw as well as the head and tail stocks. I avoid these types of knurls wherever I can. Starting the lathe at 90 rpm, I bring the knurl wheels into contact with the workpiece to find the contact point and then back out slightly and increase the pressure on the knurl to take the first bite.
I'll engage the power feed and ensure plenty of oil. I'll allow the nil to settle and then I'll stop the lathe to check the start. I can say now that I've got a good imprint with no double tracking. There are varying views on whether to take a heavy or light cut on the first pass. What I find works for me is to take a decent bite without being too greedy. I'm going to run the knurl down the whole length of the bar and then cut out those bits that I don't want. This is preferable to making individual knurls along the bar. Stainless steel is not the easiest material to knurl. Brass and aluminium are far more forgiving and far less stressful on both the machine and tooling. That's a good start to the knurl and I'm happy with that. It's a good imprint across the whole length of the workpiece. Now I'm going to go back on the tool and apply a little bit more pressure, restarting the knurl, then reverse feed and go back the other way. I much prefer an oil can to apply lubricant rather than a brush. Getting the bristles caught in the knurl doesn't help the tool any and it usually doesn't end well for the brush either. After two passes the knurl is progressing nicely, however it's still not fully formed. I'm going to take another pass and then reassess. I've increased the speed to 165 rpm. As this is a long knurl I will need to ensure that the knurls don't get too hot. I much prefer lower speeds for knurling as high speeds tend to heat up the tool. After five passes the knurl is now fully formed. It's produced a nice knurl and I'm very happy with it. I've reset the tool holder with a WNMG insert and I'm going to go along the bar and just make a few small plunge cuts at the points where I want to reduce the bar diameter. The first plunge cut is 35mm from the end of the bar, then another one at 20mm, then 10, followed by 20, 10, 20, 10 and 20mm. This leaves four knurl parts with three reliefs in between them.
Now it's just a matter of continuing to reduce in the diameter until I get to the size that I want. Half an inch or 13 millimeter sounds about right. I've gone back to a TPMR insert just to see how it performs in this situation and on stainless. I have to say, initially I'm not very impressed. I'll slow back down to 415 RPM and I'll change the tool back to WMNG. I'll make a finishing pass and then put a small chamfer on the end of the bar. Now I'm turning down the working end of the tool, ready to turn it round and finish off with the taper. The turning for this setup is now complete. 
time to change to an 8 inch 4 jaw chuck. I'm using a dial indicator to dial a part to the chuck to ensure I get a good and accurate start. I'm turning down the working end of the tool. It's important that this is in perfect alignment with the final taper. This tool is cutting very well on stainless and it's producing a very good result. Time to use a three point steady. I'm going to bring the tailstock centre back to the workpiece to ensure that I can position the steady fingers. Then I can withdraw the tailstock and complete the end.
Now that the tool is all centered, I can withdraw the tailstock. Then I need to turn out the center hole before finishing the point. But first I need to move the compound slide to 30 degrees. Now that the centre has been turned out, I can work on the taper. One final pass and the tool is complete. Time to test it. I'll centre punch a piece of stock and set it up in the four jaw chuck, then I'll use the tool and the dial gauge to centre it. By placing the tool between the live center and the workpiece, I can now use the dial indicator to dial the work in so that the center point is in perfect alignment with the tailstock. This is the job that this tool is designed to do. That is now centered. Spinning the tool by hand shows that the tool is accurate just that the camera wanted to focus on my hand rather than the dial gauge. This is an accurate tool and I'm very happy with it. I've used the original tool over many years and now I've got a new one in stainless steel. This is a good first lathe project for new users as it employs many features of the metal lathe. Knurling, plunge cutting, three point steady and taper turning to name a few. And for the seasoned machinist it's a great rainy afternoon project to make a very useful tool. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, be productive, be creative and most importantly, be safe in your shed. Catch you next time.